Assalamualaikum, Dr. Naik, Dr. Zakir Naik. My name is Rashid. Um, I'm a government officer. Uh, talking about unity in the Muslim Ummah. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, scholars in Malaysia, I believe most of us uh, follow same uh, scholars. But when it comes to uh, political ideology, uh, we fall apart into certain Sorry, parties. I can't hear you clearly, sister, um, uh, brother. Can okay. you say a bit slowly because the microphone is not very clear? Can you speak a bit loudly and slowly? Okay. All right. Better. Uh, talking about scholars in Malaysia, most of us follow same scholars. But when it comes into political ideology, we fall apart into certain parties. My question is, how to, to unite them so that uh, all of us will be under one party and our voice will get stronger in parliament? But that's a very good you. question that when, when it comes to scholars, we, we follow one scholar. But when it comes to political party, we follow different parties. How to unite them? The only way you can unite is on the basis of Quran and Sunnah. You can unite the Muslims, whether he's a politician, whether he's a businessman, whether he's a comedy, uh, academician, whether he's a scientist, whether he's a doctor, whether he's a dai, whether practicing. Only way you can unite this is a master key. Quran and Sai Hadith. And if that person doesn't want to follow Quran and Sai Hadith, that means he may not be a good practicing Muslim. Whether we win the seat or not, whether we come to power or not, all this is a test from Allah. This is a test from Allah. Our main aim should be to unite the Muslim Ummah on the Quran and Sai Hadith. Some people may not be following the Quran, but for the political gain, they may say they are practicing Muslim, they may not be. Some people are practicing Muslim, when they come to power, they show their less practicing because they want to become, they want to continue being in power. Let not the politics of this world take you away from Jannah. You are a very bad businessman. If you are going to barter the seat of this world for your seat in Jannah, you are a very bad businessman. The seat in Jannah is much more valuable. So what we find that many a times in politics, we are more bothered about maintaining a seat than maintaining the guidance of Allah and His Rasul. In India, I know many politicians who are far away from the deen, but because they will win, because they show they're Islamic, they will prove themselves Islamic, they may not be Islamic. There are some good Muslims who come to power to show themselves secular, what they do? That they start start behaving secular. They are good Muslims. Before they came to power, they were practicing Muslim. Oh, now because I have come to power, if I wear trousers of the ankle, what will people say? So the trousers go below. They have a beard, they shave their beard. They were practicing before. So let not, and Allah says in the Quran in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse number 185. Allah says, Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 185. Every soul shall have a taste of death. The final recompense will be on the day of judgment. And the person who is safe from the hellfire and enters Jannah has achieved the objectives of this world. For this world is nothing but goods and chattels of deception. All this is a test for us. Whether when I do business, am I doing business according to the Quran and the Sunnah? When I'm doing my academics, am I doing according to the Quran and the Sunnah? When I'm doing my profession, when I'm doing my job, am I honest or not? So all this is Quran and Sunnah. So the only way you can unite the Muslim Ummah is on the Quran and Sunnah. Whether they come to it or not, you at least be on Quran and Sunnah. Correct? What should we say? Whether you are able to do it or not, do you stick to the Quran and Sunnah? If everyone goes away, you stick, at least you will go to Jannah. If I stick, at least I will go to Jannah. A Jannah is very precious. You cannot barter the Jannah for anything in this world. For any power in this world, for any wealth, million dollar, trillion dollar, zillion dollar, you cannot barter it for the Jannah. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, a believer lives in this world like a prison. An unbeliever lives in this world like paradise. So once a Jew approached a scholar, I think Ibn Qayyum or Ibn Hajar, and he told him that you are a judge, you are so rich, 
I'm poor. How come this is world is present for you and Jannah for me? So he told him, if you come to know what will happen to you in Akhirah, because you are doing shirk, you'll go to Jahannam, this world will be Jannah for you. And me, if I follow the Quran and Sunnah and go to Jannah, all this judge and the wealth is like a prison for me compared to the pleasure in Akhirah. So if we live like that, that this life is the test for the hereafter, and we follow the Quran and Sunnah, inshallah, peace will be with you. If you understand the concept of Islam, irrespective of what the enemies do to you, you will be peaceful. Because your Jannah is in your heart, not in the dunya. Hope that answers the question.